So we're looking at the integral between the limits of 0 and 2 pi of cosine of x to the power of 2020 dx. Now this is a really innocent looking integral, but it turns out it's really hard to solve. And the way we're going to approach this, we can't integrate cosine to this high power straight away, but we're going to try and express cosine of x in another way. And we can do this using Euler's formula. So if you remember e to the power of ix, we can express this as cosine of x plus i, which is the imaginary constant, times sine of x. And then we have an analogous formula if we put e to the minus ix, just replace all the x's by minus x. Then since cosine is an even function, this is the same as cosine of x. And since sine of x is an odd function, we can bring out the minus to the front. So we have minus i sine of x. And this is quite a standard formulation. Then we can add these two functions. So we're going to have e to the power of ix plus e to the power of minus ix. And then we see that i times sine of x, they cancel. And we're left with two factors of cosine of x. So if I divide the left-hand side by 2, this precisely equals x. So although this integral was stated in the real domain, we are going to try and use complex numbers to try and help us to get to something we can integrate. So we're going to look at cosine to the power of 2020. And since this number is going to appear a lot, I'm just going to call n to be 2020. So we need to look at cosine to the power of n of x. Well, using this equation, this is just e to the power of ix plus e to the power of minus ix to the power of n. And we also have a 2, but I'm just going to bring this out the front. So this is 1 over 2 to the n. And then this just, uh, this equation holds. So now we have the sum of two terms to a high power. And if you remember, we can use the binomial theorem. So this states if we have two numbers, a and b, and we multiply, well, bring them to the power of n, if we're expanding all these brackets out, we have this formula which tells us this is equal to the sum from k equals 0 up to n of n choose k. And now this gives us all the combinations. And then we have a to the power of k times b to the power of n minus k. So if we use this formula, this gives us 1 over 2 to the n times this sum from k equals 0 up to n of n choose k. These are just the coefficients. And then we have, so imagine a equals the first term, e to the ix, and b equals the second term, e to the minus ix. Then we have e to the ix times k, and just using the law of indices, we can just bring this into this power, so e to the ix k. And then for the second one, we have e to the minus ix, and instead we have n minus k. And what's nice is since these have the same base, we can actually combine these powers. We can just add them or subtract them because there's a minus here. So this simplifies to 1 over 2 to the power of n of this sum. This doesn't change. So k equals 0 up to n, n choose k. And as we're saying, we just combine these powers. We have e to the power of i times x. And now think about multiplying this minus with this bracket. So then we have plus k minus n. And we also have a k here. So this is 2k minus n. So the next part is a bit long, so I'm just going to clear up a bit more space. So this is what we've shown so far. We've shown that cosine of n is equal to this function, which is the sum of these complex numbers. We want to get it into something we can integrate. And the way we do that is we want to get it back into the sums of cosines. And to do that, we're going to use um, Euler's formula again. So we want to get it back into something looking like this, maybe different powers. But if we can get it back into something like this, we can express it as cosines again. And the way we do that is using a little trick. And I'm going to split this sum into two separate sums. So we write this as 1 over 2 to the power of n times the sum from k equals 0 up to n. Uh, n choose k. And I'm just going to divide, it, divide this by 2. So we have e to the i x 2kn over 2. And then we need another sum. So essentially what I'm doing, I'm just writing a as a over 2 plus a over 2. So nothing special here, but this will help us in a bit. So we have another sum, k equals 0, up to n, n choose k of this uh, complex number, which is e to the ix, 2k minus n over 2. And this, uh, this constant here, 1 over 2n, is multiplying both these series. So this is a little bit closer to this form. Now what I'm going to do is think about this sum Instead of going from 0 up to n, think of it going backwards from n to k. So I'm going to think of mapping the uh, like 
the dummy variable that we're summing over from k over to n minus k. So instead of summing from the bottom up, we're going to sum from the top down. And uh, so now we need to think about replacing wherever we see a k by n minus k. And then I'm just going to use the same um, variable here. We're going to use k again. So this stays the same. I'm not going to bother writing it out, but this first bit stays the same. And then we have a plus times the sum, plus of the sum from k equals 0 up to n. So it's the same variable, but now we replace uh, wherever we see k by n minus k. And we can do this because addition is commutative. It doesn't matter what order we add stuff, as long as all the terms are there. It's the same thing. So we have n minus k on the bottom. And now we need to think about what is if we replace if we replace k in here by n minus k. So we have 2 times n minus k minus n. What is this? Uh, this is equal, we have 2n minus n, so we have n minus 2k. So now this is e to the power of ix times n minus 2k. And we still have divided by 2. So imagine this bracket still being here. So there's two important observations to make. The first one involves these coefficients. So we need to know that n choose n minus k. How is this defined? This is defined as n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. But this is exactly the same formula for n choose k. So these, these coefficients are the same as these ones over here, which makes sense because um, it doesn't matter which way we order um, add the stuff, the coefficients are going to be the same. Um, so we can replace these, um, this factor, n choose n minus k, by just n choose k. And then we can combine these series again. And the second key observation is that we have this factor of n minus 2k. This is actually just equal to minus of 2k minus n, which is minus this. So think about this formula, we have x and then we have a minus x. So this is how we're going to use it. So let me just write everything out again so we can see clearly. We have 1 over 2 to the power of n times the series from k equals 0 up to n. And then as we were saying, we can bring these coefficients together. We have n choose k. And then I'm going to write this big brackets. We have e to the power of ix, 2k minus n. And then we have this other term, which is plus e to the power of minus ix, 2k minus n. As we were saying, this is n minus 2k is the same as minus 2k minus n. So I've just brought the minus to the front. And then they're both divided by 2 here. So I hope that's clear. But this factorization allows us to use Euler's formula again. So we can express um, the sum and the fraction as just another cosine. So we eliminate the complex numbers to get back to real numbers. So all to say, we can write this as 1 over 2 to the power of n times the sum from k equals 0 up to n, n choose k of, so what's our, our new factor in here? So before we had x just up here, but now we have x times 2k minus n. So we can just replace that in here. So this gives us cosine of 2k minus n times x. And this is really helpful because we've expressed cosine to a high power, which is something we can't integrate, into a sum of other cosines. So we have these coefficients, but we also have cosines. And they, they don't have any powers, so it means we can integrate this stuff. So again, let me wipe up the board, clear up some more space, and then we're going to integrate this. OK, so I've just rewritten out what we just previously showed. I've just replaced cosine to the power of 2020 with this function, which is the sum of other cosines. And now, since integration is linear, we can interchange the sum and the, and the integral. So let's start off with that. We also have constants, and that doesn't matter. They don't depend on x, so we can just bring them out. 1 over 2 to the power of n, where n is, remember, this is 2020. And we can bring the sum out, the sum from from k equals 0 up to n, and also the coefficients, n choose k. OK, now we can multiply this by the integral between 0 and pi, cosine 2k minus n times x. And this is something we can integrate. Now, what's especially nice here is that this integral is going to be 0 almost all of the time. Think about these coefficients, uh, the values here, k. They're summing from k equals 0 up to n, so they can take any value uh, between 0 and n. And if this number here isn't 0, so if, if k, 2k minus n does not equal 0, then we have an integer. And we're integrating, so imagine, just imagine integrating, I don't know, 17 of x dx. 
Now what's really important is that we're integrating over two pi, zero and two pi. So think about this function, it's not too important, but it oscillates like crazy, but at the point two pi, it ends back up at one. So this is all to say that no matter what integer we have here, this is gonna to integrate to zero, just by the nature of this trigonometric function. Two pi is a whole period for this function. So this integral is gonna be zero whenever these coefficients aren't zero. So when, what happens otherwise? So what happens if 2k minus n equals zero? That's the only time that this isn't gonna be equal to zero. So when 2k minus n equals zero, well then we have cosine of zero, which equals one. So we just have the integral of one between zero and two pi. Now, when does this happen? Let's solve this for k. This is very simple. It's just when k equals n divided by two. So the halfway point in this series is exactly when, the only time when this integral is not zero. So we can simplify this. So we can write this as one over two to the n, this doesn't change, but the sum, now we know that only does not equal zero when k equals n over two. So we can just input the value of k equals n over two. So we have n choose n divided by two. And then we have the integral between zero and two pi of, as we said, this is when this equals zero. So we have the integral of one dx. And then this we can evaluate. This is just the length of the interval is two pi. So our answer is if we input back in n equals 2020, it's nice because we have a very general formulation to this problem. Um, but anyway, for this particular value, our solution is one over two to the power of 2020. Uh, 2020 choose, well, this is 10, 10, half of its value. And then as we said, this is equal to two pi. So this is the answer. I'm just gonna uh, simplify this two here, just to make it a bit nicer. This is one over two to the power of 2019 times 20, 20 choose 10, 10 multiplied by pi. And this is the answer, it's actually quite nasty, but we got there in the end. This is the solution to our original integral.